Do you have existing Azure resources that you want to manage with Terraform? The Azure Terraform Export Tool can help you get started by exporting your existing resources into Terraform configuration files. In this episode of Terraform Tuesday, we'll revisit the tool to see what's new and improved. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Terraform Tuesday. Today, we're gonna revisit the Azure Terraform Export Tool, formerly known as Azure Terrify. There's been some significant changes and improvements since the last video I did on it in September of 2022. We'll start today with a quick overview of how the Azure Terraform Export Tool works, and then we'll dive into the new features and improvements. Now, before we get started, two quick things. Uh, first off, if you haven't already subscribed to Anton Babenko's weekly Terraform newsletter, I highly recommend it. Each week, he rounds up the best Terraform-related articles and open source projects that are out there. For instance, a recent issue, he highlighted Togomac, a declarative pipeline tool that uses HCL and Terraform to define your pipelines. If that sounds cool to you, check out the link in the description below. Secondly, if you're interested in joining an Azure-focused Terraform community, check out the Azure Terraform Community Slack channel. It's a great place to ask questions, share your experiences, and learn from others. I'll put a link to the channel in the description below. And now, a quick primer about the Azure Terraform export tool. As I mentioned in the introduction, I covered the Azure Terraform export tool a little over a year ago, when it was in version 0.6. Now, a lot has changed since then, and I thought it would be a good idea to revisit the tool and see what's new. The most obvious change is the name. Instead of calling it Azure Terrify, which I enjoy saying, but also recognize is not exactly comforting, the tool is now called the Azure Terraform Export Tool. It's a bit more descriptive and easier to bring up in a meeting with your boss without getting a whole lot of side eye. However, even though the name has changed, the fundamentals of the tool have not. The Azure Terraform Export Tool is a command line tool that connects to your Azure subscriptions and exports your existing resources into Terraform configuration files. You can scope and filter which resources you want it to discover, and you can have it add to an existing configuration and state backend, or create a new configuration and state data. That's right, it not only generates the configuration, it also populates the state data for you, essentially doing the work that the imperative import process did in Terraform Pre 1.5. The tool itself is written in Go, so it's a single binary that you can download on run on Windows, Mac, or Linux. It's also open source, so you can check out the code and contribute to the project if you want to. I'll put a link to the GitHub repository in the description down below. When I did my original video, I highlighted some issues and limitations of the tool. For instance, it couldn't infer whether to use the Azure RM Windows Virtual Machine or the Azure RM Linux Virtual Machine resource type. It just didn't know which one a virtual machine was. It also didn't support all the resources in the Azure RM provider. Since that time, the tool has matured a lot and now supports a ton of resources, types, and can correctly pick between Windows and Linux virtual machines. For starters, right after I did my original video, they released 0.7 of the tool, which included a query command for more granular control over the resource types you want to export. If you're dealing with a large subscription containing thousands of resources, this command might be helpful to select only the resource types that you actually want to export. The next big enhancement is the support of import blocks when you're using Terraform 1.5 or newer. If you haven't already watched my video on import blocks, the too long didn't watch is that import blocks are a declarative approach to performing imports in Terraform. They're an improvement over the existing import command because they produce an execution plan before altering state, and you can import multiple resources at the same time. While the execution plan is nice for importing existing resources safely, it's really being able to do multiple imports at the same time that makes import blocks a game changer. If you're dealing with a large number of resources, 
Importing them in parallel can significantly reduce the time it takes to run the import process. If you're familiar with the AZ API provider, you know there are times when the Azure RM provider just doesn't cut it. Preview services, beta features, and new options might not be in the Azure RM provider. By using the AZ API provider for some resources, you can import and manage essentially everything in Azure with Terraform. The tool also supports generating explicit role assignments for the resources that you are exporting. It's something that I hadn't thought about before, but you may want to manage the permissions of resources with Terraform along with the resources themselves. I mean, I've assigned permissions with Terraform plenty of times, but I hadn't thought about the need to capture that information when exporting existing resources. Lastly, the authentication options have expanded to cover all the usual suspects, the Azure CLI, using service principles, MSI, and now OIDC. I suppose that could be useful in an automation context. Now, I tend to use the Azure CLI authentication locally, but if you're dealing with production resources that are heavily restricted, OIDC might be the only way to get the credentials you need to export your resources. Of course, this video wouldn't be complete if I didn't at least demo some of the new features. So let's jump over to the terminal and try out using the Azure Terraform export tool. At the terminal, I first want to check out the version of the Azure Terraform export tool I'm running. The command is aztf export dash dash version, and it looks like I'm running version 0.14.0, which is the latest as of this recording. Now I want to use the query function to export only network resources found in a resource group. Now I've already deployed an environment using the configuration that's found in the setup directory of the directory for this Terraform Tuesday. If you're looking for these files, you can always find them in the GitHub repository, Terraform Tuesday, link is down in the description. So based off of that setup configuration, I have an Azure resource group called Taco Truck Network that has some network resources in it. And I have a separate resource group called taco truck VM with some compute resources in it and a storage account. Let's see what happens when I run the query command. The command is aztf export query dash g dash r dash n resource group equals taco truck network and type contains microsoft.network. Now the syntax of the query in there uses the Azure resource graph, which is Somewhat intuitive to read, but you might struggle to write if you're not reading the docs first. In particular, this query gets all the resources in the resource group taco truck network that have a type starting with Microsoft.network. The dash R in the command tells the tool to get all the child resources of any parent resources, which is necessary to get something like the subnets inside of a virtual network. The dash G in the command only generates the mapping file and does not perform the actual import of resources, and the dash N makes the command non-interactive. I'll kick off the command, and then we can check out and see what it produced. Okay, the command has completed. Let's take a look at the files it generated. In the mapping file is a listing of all the resources that were found using our query. If we look in the import.tf file, there are import blocks for all the entries that were in the mapping. What we don't have is the actual configuration corresponding to the to address that's in the import blocks. Now that's because we use the dash G flag to only generate the mapping. From here, we could use the dash generate dash config out flag with Terraform plan to produce the configuration, or we could remove the dash G from our previous aztf export command and instead use dash F to overwrite the existing directory contents. Let's give that a try. I'm going to run the command, except now I've swapped out the G for an F, which means overwrite the contents of the existing directory, but it's using the exact same query. After a few moments, there we go. This time, not only does it create the files we've already seen, it also creates a main.tf file with the actual configuration and a terraform.tf state file with the state data. We could have targeted a remote state backend if we had wanted to, but I'm just using the local file system for this demonstration. 
Reviewing the contents of the main.tf, it still seems like the tool is not creating any dynamic references between resources in the configuration. Instead, it creates explicit dependencies using the depends on block to make sure the order of operations when it creates things is consistent. I would love to see a future enhancement that would instead put in references between resources for attributes like the resource group name and location. I'd also love to see the addition of input variables, but I'm not sure what form that would take. Okay, so that's the new query option and the import block support. Let's check out the support for the AZ API provider next. As part of my setup configuration, I included a storage account in the taco truck VM resource group. Now let's say for a moment that I'm using some preview features in my storage account, and those features are not yet supported by the Azure RM provider. In fact, they might never be supported. I can use the AZ API provider to export the storage account and then manage it with Terraform. The command to target a single resource is AZTF export resource, followed by the options you wanna specify and the resource ID. I want to export the storage account, use the AZ API provider and append it to my existing configuration. So the whole command would be AZTF export resource dash dash append dash dash provider name AZ API dash N and then the resource ID. Letting that one rip, after a few moments, I have an error. Uh-oh. It looks like it's trying to find the provider HashiCorp slash AZ API, which doesn't exist. The correct provider short name is Azure slash AZ API. Now I actually ran into this issue while I was working on the demo, and it only seems to crop up when appending to an existing configuration. If you're creating a new configuration, it seems to work fine. I'll file an issue on GitHub for this one. In the meantime, I'll create a new directory called storage account and run the same command, but this time I'll remove the append flag. After a few moments, I have a new configuration and state file for my storage account. Let's take a look at the contents of the configuration. Sure enough, it is using the AZ API provider as directed. I can now use Terraform to manage my storage account even though it's using preview features that are not yet supported by the Azure RM provider. Last up is role assignment support. I'm going to export the VM resource group that I created earlier, and this time I'll include the flag to export role assignments. The role assignment export only picks up on the direct role assignments, not the ones that are inherited from the subscriptions or management group level. So before I ran this command, I directly assigned the VM scanner operator role to an Azure AD user named Danny Brown on the Azure VM. The command to run the AZTF export is as follows. AZTF export resource group. So now we're exporting all the contents of the resource group. The flag include role assignment, dash dash output dash dir, and then the directory I want to send this configuration to, taco truck app, dash n, taco trucks dash VMs. The output dir argument lets me run it from the parent directory, and it will create the directory if it doesn't already exist. That's pretty handy if you want to test a few different import scenarios. Once the command finishes, we can look in the main.tf file, and sure enough, if we scroll through, there's a role assignment resource for the virtual machine. Now the block doesn't seem to have enough information in it though. Let's validate this config by running a Terraform plan. I'll go into the taco truck app directory and I'll try and run a Terraform plan to see what it comes back with. And now I'm faced with a different error. The password for the virtual machine isn't complex enough. Now this, this actually doesn't matter since the virtual machine already exists and Terraform won't change that password unless it needs to recreate the VM. But the validation rules still don't like it, so we need to change that value. I'll just add one, two, three, four, exclamation to the end, and that will meet the criteria, criteria. But this seems like a bug or a feature enhancement for the tool. Running Terraform plan again shows no changes. 
but it still seems weird that the role assignment resource doesn't include the actual role ID or the role name that's being assigned. I'll add the role definition name to the block. Now let's set it to contributor instead of VM scanner operator and then run another plan. After a few moments, this time it shows that it will recreate the role assignment. So I would say that this is another bug slash feature enhancement for the tool. The Azure Terraform export tool is still in a pre 1.0 state, so I'm not surprised to find a few rough edges. Just messing around with it, I ran into four different issues. First of all, the provider option for AZ API doesn't work if you're appending it to an existing configuration. The generated virtual machine block uses a placeholder for the password, but that placeholder doesn't meet the complexity requirements. Now, maybe that's on purpose to force you to change it, but I'd like confirmation on that. The role assignment block doesn't include the role definition name or the ID, so it's not clear what role is actually being assigned. And lastly, I tried using the module option to export to a child module, but it failed to generate the code and it created an import file inside the module directory with import blocks, which is not a valid configuration. So I don't know if I'm using it wrong or that's a bug. I'm sure there are some other issues, but those are the ones that I ran into while working on this video. I'll file issues on GitHub for these, and I encourage you to do the same if you run into any issues. Microsoft also publishes some limitations for the tool that you can find on the Learn site, and I'll include a link in the description for those. Since my last look at the Azure Terraform export tool, I'm happy to say that the tool has grown and matured. It's a viable option for exporting most Azure resources to Terraform. There's still some rough spots around the edges, but I'm confident that the team will continue to improve the tool and make it even better. I'd also love to see them expand the provider scope to include the Azure AD provider. But for the moment, the team behind the tool is relatively small and they've got plenty of work to do with the Azure RM and AZ API providers. Are you using the Azure Terraform export tool? Or are you using something else? What do you think of the existing options out there? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, please give it, you know, a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, all of those things. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Bye for now.